Hi guys, it's Hillary. Welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be kind of a fun time for me. Um, we are going to just be discussing a nine and kind of some of the issues I run into as a nine. And I've had some things um, kind of come up lately and I thought, you know what? I bet there's a lot of nines out there that feel the same way as I do in some circumstances. So I thought, you know, I'm just going to do a video and just talk. There's no script. I just want to kind of talk about what it's like to be a nine. But before I jump into that, I just want to give an overview of what is a nine, right? Let's let's do a little like backtracking. Um, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, um, this is what it is. A nine is a peacemaker. They're at the top of the circle. The Enneagram, Ennea means nine, gram means diagram. It's nine numbers within a circle. The nine is at the top. Why is it at the top? Because it can merge with all the other numbers. It can feel like any other number at any given time. And it actually struggles to feel most like a nine. If you ask a nine how they're feeling, it's very hard for them to just identify their own feelings. If they're with a one, they can take on the one's feelings and, and that goes to any number. They can merge with any number. I know for myself, I've done a lot of homework in this area. I've done a lot of soul searching and trying to really dig deep um, with the Lord and in my Bible and journaling and figuring out like, what are my feelings? What do I really feel about, you know, whatever subjects at hand? And I will be honest with you, a lot of times I do feel like, I feel like it's fine. If somebody, say for instance, um, my husband's like, hey, where do you want to go out to eat tonight? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. You know, and he's like, no, really, where do you want to go out to eat? And I'm like, no, really, I don't know. And, or he'll go, hey, do you want to go to Mexican? All right, right? And so I have to distinguish between what really is fine and I really don't have an opinion about and what am I just maybe not wanting to cause conflict, therefore withholding my opinion or even, I don't even know my opinion. So I've worked really hard to kind of know myself better so that when that kind of stuff comes my way, I have an answer and it's one true to me and it's one that I I can feel good about and I won't build resentment over and um, so if you're a nine right now even listening to this just know that is available to us it does take work it doesn't come naturally right because what is our motivation um, we don't want conflict so we're motivated by anything that we could do that there'd be no conflict from how can we keep the peace right at all cost and sometimes even to our detriment and what that looks like is we keep the peace right i create a very peaceful environment wherever i go but what happens when i can't keep the peace for instance i dealt with my mom getting cancer and then passing away with it less than a year from the day we found out she had cancer to the day she passed away and um after she passed away i really went through this kind of dark time and where I kind of lost myself I found the only way I can get peace was to isolate that is not healthy if you do that um, I just want to say that that is a way for a nine to find peace but it's not true peace so I had to work through that and um, I want to be honest like my journey of healing from my mom's um, cancer and death did take a long time it took like two and a half years and I also, during that period, went on depression medicine. I do believe that the Lord totally used this medicine to help me. It kind of gave me um, a time to just pause because I was grieving so bad I could not find peace and it just was overwhelming. So, uh, but then uh, it's been about a year. I've, I got off the medicine and I found other ways of you know, finding that peace. I have found that God healed my heart and it took really some time. And it, it took like me not isolating from my friends and my family and the Lord. Um, I had to kind of go into a space that wasn't peaceful in order to get my peace back, if that makes sense. So to briefly let you know, the nine has two wings. They can go into their one wing. Um, that brings out that little bit of uh, perfectionism side, criticism at times. I know for myself, um, this happens in me when I feel like everything's just never good enough. 
So I am a nine with a one wing and I do struggle with like, um, is my website good enough? Is my YouTube good enough? Is my Instagram good enough? Is my house good enough? I, this is the struggle that I have if I'm just being honest to where it's like, I want to rearrange. I want to redo the website. I want to always redo because there's something that I'm like, I never fully settle and say it is good enough. I guess, okay, so here's how I get through that. Here's something that hopefully will help you. So when I find myself um, struggling with like, okay, my website's not good enough and I'm spinning my wheels and I'm like, who can I hire and what can I do? I found myself now going, okay, that is my one wing coming out. Pause. What's really going on, Hillary? Get to the bottom of that. Like, why don't you feel like your website's good enough? I have found that meeting with a friend and being honest with this and being honest with a, like where I'm at and, and going, okay, uh, what can I do differently? Um, getting somebody else's opinion does help and sometimes they're able to tell me, you know, because being my friend, you absolutely know the Enneagram because of me usually. So they actually can point out like, Hillary, that one wing, you're going towards that and you're, you're not pulling out the best of it right now because there's amazing qualities of having this one wing that I love. I'm actually going towards the, the, the average qualities or even the unhealthy qualities sometimes. So I have to check myself and pivot and, and go, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, you know what? I had a friend tell me actually today that to stop comparing <laughs> because I was kind of feeling, I had this like amazing weekend away. I'm just being, pro this is like truth serum right now. So I had this amazing weekend away and this staff retreat at this church in a different state and it went really well and I'm really happy with it. And then I found myself kind of this week going like in a funk. I don't know if you feel this way sometimes, but I can definitely get caught up in this like wheel of comparison. And so my friend was like, get off of that bus right now. You are good enough. You are enough. Yes. And she knows that's what I need to hear. I need to hear that I'm good enough for just being me because as nines, we struggle with that. Right. And so, but so you got your nine, you got your one wing, your eight wing, and then you have your arrows. If you're, you know, like I know when I'm getting stuff done and I'm driven and doing well, I'm doing healthy or I'm pretty healthy and I'm going towards my three, um, arrow. And then if I'm not doing good, if I'm, I'm like anxious or whatever, I'm going towards that six unhealthy set of a six. And so, um, those are your numbers that, so that's a brief introduction to the Enneagram nine, I guess. So one thing I, I really felt like I wanted to talk about was the temptation that a nine has to belittle themselves. And especially in their own eyes. And I'm not kidding. If you're a nine, you know what I'm talking about. You know, it, it and at first glance, it, you know, it might come off as humble. I know for myself, it'll, you know, if I like belittle myself, like I'm not that great or, you know, I'm a, I'm a good life coach, but oh my gosh, you know, Rachel Hollis is an amazing life coach, right? And so I'm just like putting them up on a pedestal and, and, but in turn, um, belittling myself and what I can do. And, um, I think why I do this, um, I think I belittle myself in these moments because I'm afraid what if you found out the truth so I might as well just tell you and so it's something that I have always struggled with and it's something that I've actually had so many people call out in me and say stop putting yourself down right and I'm here to tell you stop putting yourself down I am much better like so much better than I used to be and here's the deal in the end I'm not perfect but I am good enough and I am a great life coach. I'm a great Enneagram coach and I'm doing pretty good at this YouTube thing. Okay. Does it look like everyone else's? No. Is it supposed to? No. So for you, if you're a nine and, and you put yourself down, you know, and maybe you even think you're being humble in it, you know, like, Oh, I'm not, you're great. I'm not. No, 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 no. Stop it. You are so good. You're so worth it. And I just am here to tell you, you know, that you don't have to do that. Okay, so other things about nine is, you know, we are really positive. Like for me, I am almost always positive. Like it's really hard for me to actually think in a negative way. I am a glass half full per kind of person and that is one of the gifts I think I bring. And so, um, so that's like a great quality of a nine. Um, but on the flip side, I'm a huge procrastinator. So, uh, 
Um, if you're a nine and you relate to that, let me know, <laughs> comments below. Um, it's so weird though. I'm a huge procrastinator, but I always get it done, right? And so I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm just waiting to be inspired. I'm waiting for the moment, I don't know. But um, it always gets done. And I wonder if that's something I should work on or just accept. Let me know if you, what are your thoughts about that? Because I don't know, it seems to work for me, but maybe things could be better, I guess. So another thing is, is if you're nine, I wonder if some of you feel like, well, what if I could be a two? Because a two is a helper. I just want to say like the twos and the nines, they do get mistyped for each other all the time. And just go to that core fear and core desire. So the core fear of a nine is like conflict, just for one of the things I'll say. It's conflict, like a fear of conflict, right? A two, not as much. They have, uh, their core fear is that they're not lovable as themselves. And so they're really motivated by love and getting love. And we're motivated by, you know, not having conflict. So those two usually um, can separate you if you're a nine or a two. So, but if you need any more help than that, let me know. I can always help. Leave a comment in this comment section below, so. Okay, so one thing I heard today about a nine is nines are selfless, right? And we're like, oh, that's nice. But it is, it is. Selfless is nice. It's a good quality to have. It's a healthy quality to have. But the nine also um, can struggle with being selfless, right? Separate those two. And so almost like they become invisible and, um, they they don't want to be known and they're just like you're okay everyone's okay you know you guys are all great but i'll just stand over here and maybe be a wallflower or that is unhealthy i just want to call that out right now that is not who you're supposed to be you're not supposed to be selfless less of self no that does not mean selfless two separate things so i just want to say like four or nine depending you know where you're at and your levels of health just know like showing up and being you like that's good that's good you are good you are you are so important to god's plan you are a missing puzzle piece to other people's puzzles like seriously you are part of the plan so never forget that never forget that you know or ever think that god has this plan for everyone else but me and i'm okay with that no god has an amazing plan for you too show up and grab it. Grab what God has for you. That is what I really want to say. Like grab what God has for you. If you're, you know, any number really watching this, but the nine is the one that tends to, you know, fall asleep to their own dreams and desires. I mean, what is their deadly sin? Sloth. What does that mean? Not laziness. It means falling asleep to their own dreams and desires and being that person that like, you know, comes alongside someone else and is like, you can do everything and I'll support you, but I don't need anything. Yeah, I can see where some people want to do that. I think that's the easy way out. I think that's the way where you don't feel like you don't want to take that risk, right? Because it's risky to go out on your own. It's risky to do what God's calling you to do, right? Why? Because we're having to assert ourselves. What is our wounding childhood message? It's not okay to assert ourselves. But let me tell you, you need to assert yourself. You're important. You're an important part of God's plan. Step forward. Do what God is calling you to do. I am here. I want to champion you on. Um, I've had people in my life do that for me. I was so afraid of um, going to life coaching school and becoming an Enneagram coach and assert because it meant I have to assert myself. I have to go out on Instagram and go, hey guys, like, how are you doing? And put myself out there and, you know, market myself. And, but it's important because why in the end I'm doing what God called me to do. And what is my heart's desire is to help others in this way. And by helping you, it's like, it's, I just want to see others grab onto what God has for them too. grab onto those dreams, live a life worth living and like the best is yet to come. It really is. And I believe that with all my heart. So I hope this is encouraging you today. Um, that's kind of all I wanted to share today about being a nine. Um, this video is probably way too long already. So anyways, I'm going to stop it there. I hope that I shared some things today that made sense to you. Um, but 
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it a lot, guys. It means a lot to me. Um, I love hearing from you. I love it. It just like makes my day whenever anyone reaches out and lets me know. So thank you so much. And until next time, bye, guys.